On this edition of News Conference, facing a growing backlash from retailers and consumers, the California legislature is now taking action to combat retail theft. Is it enough? Or is the real purpose to undercut a potential ballot measure which would toughen penalties far beyond what legislative Democrats desire? We talk with two members of the state assembly, Rick Chavez Zabur, the Assembly Democratic Caucus, who represents Hollywood, and Assemblymember Jackie Irwin of Thousand Oaks. There's also a bill in Sacramento that would give employees the right to disconnect from communications from their bosses during weekends and non-working hours. We talk with the author of that bill, Assemblyman Matt Haney of San Francisco. And two years ago, voters approved increasing funding for music and art programs at California's public schools. Now the author of the ballot measure contends some districts haven't increased funding at all, much to the detriment of students. We talk with a champion for public school arts and music, former LAUSD Superintendent Austin Butner. News Conference with Conan Nolan. Newsmakers, issues, impact. Your local political source for over 50 years and the longest running broadcast in Southern California. Your host, Conan Nolan. Good morning and welcome to the Tom Brokaw News Center here at Universal City. Thanks for joining us. This week, California Attorney General Rob Bonta and Assembly Speaker Robert Rivas announced a series of bills designed to respond to the epidemic of retail theft in California. It's an issue that has become so acute, stores have closed and many retailers have simply stopped calling police. With us is Assemblyman Rick chavez Burr, Democrat and Chair of the Select Committee on Retail Theft in the California Assembly. He represents West Hollywood and Santa Monica. And Assemblywoman Jackie Irwin, Democrat of Thousand Oaks and the former mayor of that city. Thanks to both of you for joining us. Uh, Assemblyman Zabur, we'll, we'll take your bill first. Um, your legislation has a number of components to it, uh, but let's talk about what may be the key one. Uh, under Prop 47, you can steal from a dozen different stores in one afternoon, and each theft is punishable by a citation. Um, it is difficult. It's not impossible, but it's difficult to compound them into a felony. Uh, so long as you don't steal more than $950 each time. Uh, how does your bill alter that? It makes uh, the law clear that you actually can aggregate um, these multiple thefts um, so that they can be prosecuted uh, as a felony by defining what the standards are for aggregation. So basically, if you have multiple thefts of smaller amounts and they're done by the same uh, def by the same defendant, by the same criminal, even though they may be against different stores, if they're similar in nature and they occur within 60 days, uh, the law clarifies that that qualifies for aggregation and therefore prosecution as a felony. One gets the impression this is uh, designed to address an unintended consequence of Prop 47, that is uh, coordinated retail theft, just people that go out and actually steal because they can resell on the market. They can fence this property very easily and make a lot of money off it. You know, we've, we've talked to all the stakeholders and the retailers uh, were a key uh, group that we spoke to. And one of the things they told us is that a very large percentage of the retail crime that's occurring in California and in Los Angeles in particular are, uh, is, is due to these professional crime rates people who go from store to store to store and steal over and over and over again. So really the ability to aggregate these multiple thefts and prosecute as a felony is a, is a new tool that we're giving, um, or it's a tool that was there, but we're clarifying how you can use that tool to make it more effective for law enforcement. Um, the, 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 my bill also has the governor's proposal in it, which basically creates a new crime for possession of stolen goods with the intent to sell. Um, so if you actually find someone with more than $950 in the value of goods, uh, you can prosecute that. And the intent standard there is, um, is demonstrated if you actually have possession of a quantity of goods that is um, inconsistent with personal use. So that is another really significant tool that will give law enforcement uh, an ability to go after these, these crime rings that are plaguing our communities. Your bill also, from what I understand, allows police to make an arrest even if they didn't witness the theft. So currently they can't make an arrest without actually seeing it? So currently for the misdemeanor crime, uh, you need to actually, the police have to be present and witness the crime. So uh, the, the bill will basically say that uh, police officers can actually 
uh, make an arrest based on videotape evidence or sworn affidavits from people who witnessed the crime themselves. So that is another new tool that we're giving law enforcement. Uh, Assembly Member Irwin, thanks for uh, waiting. The, um, you, discuss your bill, and from what I understand, this helps the, the district attorneys in the 58 counties coordinate. Uh, do I have that right? What specifically would it do? Um, so AB 1779 returns authority to the district attorneys to join charges from multiple counties in one trial when they're prosecuting organized retail theft rings that have operated across multiple jurisdictions. So these theft rings have followed a strategy, a strategy to increase their windfall and decrease their chances of spending time behind bars. So, for example... If you steal merchandise from stores in four different counties, like San Diego and Orange, store the stolen goods in San Bernardino and fence the stolen items in LA, they turn one big case into four smaller ones. So these, so what we're allowing the DAs to do is to consolidate, um, to, to basically do multi-jurisdictional prosecution to uh, try the case in one court. And I, I ran this bill a couple of years ago, wanted to get the DAs involved with this. The bill was cut in half, and it's just the uh, attorney general that has the uh, ability to do this right now. This would allow the DAs to to do it also. So when when we, we look at the, the problem of massive retail theft, we think of San Francisco, we think of Los Angeles, Thousand Oaks, what are retailers telling you and your district? Oh, we we definitely have um, folks coming into Ventura County and um, and doing these uh, the retail theft in our malls, but it becomes very hard to prosecute when they're selling it in, let's say, L.A. County or there are um, there are offenses in other counties, too. It's much easier to prosecute the organized retail theft when you can basically try um, try it in one court. Uh, there's a British philosopher named uh, Samuel Johnson who famously said there are two reasons for every action, the good reason and the real reason. Uh, the good reason is what you both have articulated. The real reason is there's a potential ballot measure that the retailers want to put on November that will alter Prop 47, which is, uh, which is a bridge too far for Democrats. Prop 47 being, of course, uh, the landmark ballot measure 10 years ago that uh, changed uh, the penalty for stealing and for drugs. Uh, dissuade me of the fact uh, of the notion that this wouldn't be happening unless that ballot measure was a possibility and that the voters could weigh in on something far more stringent, far more strict than what you're offering. So, first of all, I, I, I would uh, push back on the notion that that's far more strict than what we're offering. I think we've got a comprehensive package in seven bills that actually does more than some of the reforms that um, are proposed in Prop 47. Um, they're increasing prison penalty, but they don't, it doesn't necessarily result in what you need to do to deter crime, which is make it more likely that the police can arrest, which is what our bill is doing, and make it more likely that when you're arrested, someone has, there's a consequence. Assemblyman Rick chavez Zabur is from Hollywood and chair of the subcommittee on uh, retail theft. Uh, Jackie Irwin from Thousand Oaks, also the former mayor of that city. Thanks to both of you for, uh, for your time. Thanks for having me. Up next, there's another bill of the legislature that would allow you to stop getting texts from your boss. That's in committee this next week. We'll explain in a minute.